morning from, I guess, official day one in Porto. Um, pretty slow morning. Just woke up, got breakfast at the hotel, which was nice. Um, Good breakfast. Yeah, it's a cool little breakfast area. They have a, a restaurant in the bottom floor called Blind, which is almost exactly as you would expect. It's you eat dinner in the pure darkness. Um, so it was kind of cool to, I mean, it was, we didn't have breakfast in pure darkness, but it was cool to see the room that they do it in and it's how it's kind of designed. I don't know. Not for me, but, you know, an interesting experience for some, probably. Um, but we've walked, I guess, across the, the large bridge and seen some panoramic views this morning. Um, we're just going to kind of wander around and, and see what's what. Um, we have one port tasting we scheduled for tomorrow at 4. None currently scheduled for today, so we might just kind of walk in a few places and, and see what's what. Um, maybe do a tasting here or there, so. I think we have two good candidates for today to yeah. kind of walk in, so. Yeah, I don't think that I could do, you know, more than two tastings, given they usually give you like four or five, and at that point it's a pretty considerable amount of 40% alcohol. <laughs> we also tried to go into what turned out to be a really beautiful church, um, but turns out they have mass on Saturdays, so that was a little awkward, but nobody seemed offended. It just <laughs> no. was a whoops. <laughs> yeah, I think... Uh, for a minute I thought it was Sunday and I was like wait a minute this isn't Sunday right <laughs> so, I think they were trying to get us to come in you know it was nice they yeah. were welcoming us like come on in <laughs> yeah. uh, but we turned around just to let them have their masks in peace yeah so I think a, a bit of wandering to do this morning a bit of picture taking it's supposed to get quite cloudy and, and windy later so uh, maybe some shopping yeah maybe some, <laughs> some shopping if it's too chilly I think you can see we're in jackets so it's already a bit chilly this morning uh, more to come today though Just like that, we're back to Kelly's favorite alley of Porto so far. There's only a few stairs here. Good afternoon, or I guess good evening. Um, so we uh, did a lot since our check-in. Um, we went back to the hotel and took our COVID test so that we can go home. Yay. Uh, very thankful that both of those were negative. Um, after some challenge, we finally got them accepted by Verify, so I think that we should be good to go. Um, we need to sort out the, the Spain thing, though. Yeah, Spain is a little TBD. Still working on that. Um, We'll probably look into it more tonight. But then we went out and got lunch across the river where the port houses are. There's this uh, Mercado over there. Um, we found this really cool sandwich shop. Um, had it just amazing sandwiches. We actually went back and ordered another one after we already ordered. because Made just, friends with the owners. <laughs> yeah, it was just really good. It was like a husband-wife owned, operated sandwich shop. And it was really good. Um, then we went to, what was the first one? Quinto de Naval. Quinto de Naval um, to do our first proper port tasting. Um, so we tasted five ports. Um, it one, was a white. It was a dry, very dry white, which honestly I was kind of unimpressed with. It just didn't, it didn't really taste, look, or feel like a port to me. Um, they said that was on purpose, but it seemed a little weird. Um, we tried a, a typical, I think, ruby port. Um, well, we tried their black first. Yeah, which black, was like their... which is like trying to yeah they were trying to like lure in younger generations that don't like port for me it was not as good as regular port so i'm not really sure how that works but not for us 
Yeah, and then we try to lay bottle vintage, which essentially means after they pulled everything else out of the, the casks, this was the last bunch to go. Um, so spent a total of five years in cask, and then they bottled unfiltered. Um, it was decent. I liked it more than the first one, for sure. Um, and then from there, we tried a 1996 vintage port, so it had some good age on it. Um, it was very pleasant. Um, I think that's in the running to take home. Um, we might go back so. and get some more. And then after that, the last one was a 20-year tawny. So tawny just means that it aged 20 years in barrels rather than in a bottle. Um, it was good. I think that we got really ruined on tawny port after we tried the, the small line maker in Doro. Which um, stinks because we can't buy that either. Yeah, he's, so. he's not selling that to me. Um, I don't think he would sell that if his life depended <laughs> on it. Yeah, so from there, we then went to another one called, I think it, what is it, Vasquez da, we have a bag. Vasquez de Carvalho. <laughs> Vasquez de Carvalho, which we learned was a very, well, I guess what they did typically in the past was they um, farmed, they made grapes, and they made wine, and then essentially just sold that wine to, to large distributors, you know, big names like Taylor or um, someone else, or something. someone else. Um, and then a few years ago in 2015, um, the, I guess the mom owner decided that their wine is too good for that nonsense. And so she said, you know what, I'm just going to incorporate my own business, which is incredibly difficult and very expensive to do here in, in Porto to essentially establish yourself as a, a new port maker. Well, they did say, though, that they've kept some port every year for yeah. themselves from each year's harvest. And so they still have that and they still use that for their own vintages and, well, excuse me, not vintages, but mixes today for their blending. So yeah. that's kind of cool that they've even kept some of it, even though they sold most to the big producers. Yeah. Um, so we did a, a tasting there. Honestly, I was kind of so-so on doing another tasting after doing five ports. I was like, I don't know if I can do another five, but I'm very glad that we went. Um, their white was very nice. It was seven years and small. Yeah, that, that, that would be what we have here in this bag. <laughs> um, it spent seven years in French oak, and it has this beautiful golden honey color. Um, just amazing tasting notes. Um, we did a late bottle vintage from 2015, which was the first year they incorporated, which was, it was very nice. I don't think that the ruby port is, like the, the late bottle vintage style is quite for me. I mean, it is a blend of multiple, like even though it's a vintage 2015, it's a blend of multiple years with a like most of the grapes from 2015. Um, we then tried two tawnies, um, which were both very good. Honestly, I think it's the best tawny we've had since the small winery producer. Yeah, um, I think so. But then as we were leaving, we were gonna we were gonna order, not order, but take home two bottles of the white anyway, because it was just, we thought it was really nice. Um, before we wrap up and head back to the hotel, the funny of the day was that Kelly asked the lady that worked there, how long can we keep this in our cellar? And she just looked at Kelly and said, 100 years, 200, I don't know. <laughs> longer so than you. Longer than me, which is just great. <laughs> yeah, we'll hope that Kelly lasts another 100. That would be fantastic. So I think that we're going to get back to the hotel. I don't think we're going to try to do too much for dinner, considering we've spent all of our money today online. Um, probably the world's fanciest McDonald's. Yeah, probably the world's fanciest McDonald's or something similar. So <laughs> we'll check in after we figure that out. is our first third take <laughs> um, so good morning from our last full day of uh, vacation um, tomorrow is a travel day so we're gonna spend half the day flying back to Barcelona and then getting into the, the hotel which is the same as the first uh, hotel we stayed in on this trip and then um, Tuesday is our travel day home so yesterday honestly we did not do much after <laughs> our wine catch-in um, I think we were both kind of uh, feeling it after the, not as in drunk, just as in tired and um, kind of palate soaked of tasting nine different ports in a few hours time. Um, so we ended up actually just grabbing some salads um, 
from the grocery store that was near us. And it was actually really nice. It had like a whole restaurant inside, kind of like a Wegmans, but not as big. Um, so we just grabbed some salads, ate those in the room, um, and then finished the port documentary that we were watching. Um, and then I watched F1 qualifying. <laughs> Thank you.